Walt Disney World Marathon Weekend is behind us. We had three of our Do Hard Things Today family. I actually had some more people down there that listened to the podcast and participate that were, were there. But we had our own Jed Blackwell did the 5K. Bonnie Blackwell did the half marathon. And I participated in the Dopey Challenge as well. So we're going to talk about that. Hopefully some of you guys will want to jump into some of this run Disney action next year. A lot of races and things going on. But we got Coach Katie Malone over there, and she's been itching to hear about this fun adventure that we went on. She's even, you know what, Jed? One day she may step up and participate in something this hard. I know she's done a few <laughs> things. I know she's done some some of those little Iron Man things she talks about and stuff like that. But one day she might step it up to our league. Yeah. And, 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 and run a five do some of the stuff that we do <laughs> today, but today i just have questions so now she's just got lots questions. Of questions so we're gonna turn over the floor to you and you just ask away we've got jed blackwell who who completed his first 5k yep and went out there and completely smashed it we got bonnie blackwell who she probably the most impressive thing about the entire thing was she had all this build up and and was was preparing and and had actually run more than a half marathon in training and preparation then to have the disappointment the day before of having the course cut because of of weather but then to have the mental fortitude to be able to go out there and and smash out her run and and of course anything you want to hear from me you've probably heard everything you need to hear from me but coach katie malone the floor is yours thank you well i'm going to start with judd okay. since you did a 5K yeah. for the first time? I did. Ever? Yeah. First time ever. Okay. No, I, I ran three miles, 3.1 miles on my own the Sunday before. But No, no, no. But I mean in a race. Yeah, first time. So I this did. was your first mm-hmm. race, true race experience. Yep. You've watched a 5K before, yeah. I'm guessing, because you cover Yeah, covered, cro- covered cross country. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So um, when you were getting ready for this, kind of uh, how long did it take you or, or how long did you take to train for it? How many months ahead did you start training? <laughs> I joked with everybody that living with Bonnie and going to Disney with her, I was going to walk 10 miles a day anyway. Uh-huh. And I did. And that doing what I do here, walking back and forth next door and around this huge store, I was going to walk three miles a day. And I did, but I did a little bit more training than I let on <laughs> and a little bit more than, than even Bonnie knew. I would, I would go walk around the block at lunchtime. I would uh-huh. go jog around at home at lunchtime. Um, I will tell you the first, the first time I went all out and felt like I completed 3.1 miles as fast as I could do was that Sunday before. Oh, wow. Um, so you kind of did a little pre-race yeah, race yeah, for I yourself. Guess, I put it all together for myself and then. I was not prepared for being in traffic. That was that was different <laughs> for me. And I also discovered at Disney that my got to get there, got to get around you fast as I can walk, walk is more sustainable than my slowest jog. Yes. So that's what I did a lot of. A I, lot of times it is. So when you say traffic, you're just talking about it being crowded on the course yeah, because you, there were so many people. Uh, the 5K runs down a road. One thing I was joking with Bonnie and Kevin about, I didn't realize how slick the paint in the middle of the road is. Yes. Those yellow lines are slick. Especially if it's wet. Yeah, and especially at 5 in the morning. Yes. Um, I didn't realize that. So it, we run down a road, then you come in World Showcase back by Mexico, and you make a left, and you go uh, clockwise around the lake there. World Showcase, for those people that have been to Epcot, that's the big lake yeah. That's every that's the countries that surround yeah. that. You run clockwise around the lake and then when you cross a little bridge to take you back toward the main part of Epcot, there's a little bit of a bottleneck. Everybody kind of jams together. There was a mile marker there. The big bad wolf was there, a character that's never out. Um so there was a little bit of stop and go right there. It probably took me a minute, minute and a half to get through there. I did stop in front of the lake and attempt a selfie, but my camera didn't didn't do it. Oh no. Um did a couple of other things. So I was, I'd say I was three minutes slower than I was the Sunday prior, but I was also taking my time a little bit. And I, I stopped talking to Kevin. He came, he came back to see me after he had finished his part of it. He came back to cheer me on a little bit. So I was talking to him too. I did run further than I had run at a stretch. I probably ran the, the last 
half mile, maybe a little bit more. Nice. Yeah, which was something that I hadn't done a whole lot of. I just, I ran a little bit, I jogged a little bit to begin with. And then when I noticed the traffic and saw everything slow down, I kind of took my time and went with that fast walk and saved my running till Uh there at the end. So Uh, when you finished, how did you, how did you feel when you finished? It's an accomplishment to have it done. Were you... Like, did they put the medal around your neck? Did you wear no, it around just, for the no, day? No, they just handed us the medal. I haven't put it on yet. You honestly. haven't worn no, it. I haven't put it on yet. I've got a shadow box at home. I'm, I'm planning on what? You this. haven't put I your haven't, medal on? You didn't. I mean, I like after the race. So, so well, I always after, feel like you wear it after the race. After the race is when the worst weather on Thursday was starting. Okay, never mind. Um, <laughs> it was it was raining as we were waiting to get on the bus. I had my hands full. I was eating a banana and drinking a Gatorade, so I really didn't have enough hands to put the medal okay. on. Okay. And I was trying to keep my legs from cramping because, you know, you go get immediately on the bus and you fold it when you're six foot four. Yeah. You fold up into a bus seat. And when I went to stand up, I was like, I don't, this isn't a great idea. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to do this. I don't really <laughs> think that somebody who's six four folds up into a bus seat very well. No, not, not too much. But it, it was fun. It was, um, I joke, Kevin made a very nice Facebook post about it. So when Bonnie ran her half, she's like, why didn't I get a Facebook post? I said, because he didn't think you'd quit. <laughs> said, no. He had confidence in you. No, you know, and, and, and that whole post was, and it was, it was to celebrate you, but oh. it was also for, there's a lot of people out there that I think a year ago, when I think about you, take a little liberty mm-hmm. here, you even referenced it. It's like you were walking around the block when Bonnie didn't even know you were. Yeah. I think there was a little, I think he'd probably admit that there may be a little trepidation of, okay, is this something that, that I really. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll pop- admit, I'll admit right away. I didn't think I could run three miles. Or I, I didn't think I, I had not gone three miles without stopping other than in the theme parks at Disney in 30 years. Yeah, and, and you did that. Yeah. And, and it was, you know, and the thing is, anytime you do things like this, you really don't know the impact you're having on other people. They're like, man, right. you know, he just did that. Right. And he worked so hard to be able to do that. And, and so many people were proud of you. Yeah, well, one of the things that surprises people, and we always say this when we're doing the build up to the podcast, I wanted to get your perspective on it. And I, I intentionally have not asked you this until we got on, got on the air. Talk about, Standing in that corral and just the the difference. You talk about seeing a five K before and, and, and seeing a talk about that. What what was that like? And was there anxiety? What 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 was that like? Knowing you've got to go, knowing you're about to go, it is a different kind of animal there. Uh watching all those people, seeing the people around you. Actually there was a young lady in a wheelchair near me and it I didn't ask her circumstances I didn't I didn't bother to ask but it looked like she had intended to run and was in the wheelchair instead she had a boot on so it looked like she was she had intended to to run um had someone pushing her and the spokes of her wheelchair were green glowing green and I tried to keep sight of her she was my marker and we started together. We started last. I was in, I was in the last group out of the corral. So that experience you're talking about being there, waiting on it to go, I, I got that full experience. Yeah. Because <laughs> I and I hate crowds. I hate being cramped in like that. I wasn't having a great time. But as it started thinning out, and I saw, you know what, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be last. It was me and 200, 300 other people. Yeah. But we were last out. How long did you have to wait? An hour, <gasps> probably. First group went about five, and I, I, I think I stepped off at five fifty eight. <laughs> wow. Yeah, there's there's ten thousand people in the race, and and it's a it's a different experience everywhere. But the reason I ask that is because what what he gets to see is, and even in the corrals, they they separate the crowd. They might break the corrals into ten groups, and basically they run a they run a line across you. That group goes. They shoot off fireworks every time. They say three, two, one, bam, and so wow. it. You watch how many starts? A ton yeah, of it, starts. It, Forty. Yeah, 
and there's a 50 star and there's like a big stage there's a national anthem there's all these things this it's a big deal and so it's a that's why i wanted to to, to ask you that of, of it it usually does want it builds a lot of excitement right but it can also make you a little bit anxious as well of it um, it did and, and the thing i took away from the race the most y'all are asking about my impressions and everything the thing i took about away from the most is i was without a doubt among the last 200, 300 people to start. And there were 600 or 700 that finished behind me. That's what I So that kinda, means you passed a few I people. I passed quite a few people. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I mean, uh, he was, when, when, when I saw him, I came over to, to see him on the course. I mean, he was, he was, I had to, in fact, I had to yell at him to get, I mean, he was, he was dialed in making it happen. Good. So. You're supposed to be focused. Yeah. I like, just, I just quit running, so I was trying to get my breath back. I think when I saw Kevin. But so, what inspired you to do it? Your wife or Kevin or? Yeah, she was going. We we love Disney. We go all the time. Okay. Um, she was going, and I wasn't going to go watch. Nice. I hate running. I hate it. I I don't like it any better now than I did a year ago. But I'm stubborn enough to finish something if I start it. Okay, how about walking? Like, so what's where's it going to go from here? I, Are you going to continue walking at least? I absolutely am. I yeah. know I, I haven't in a week because, well, again, sixty miles. You need to recover. Uh, and th- yeah. that was my favorite part of the entire weekend was hearing him. And I forgot how you said it. To, you had we were texting back mm-hmm. and forth, and you had said that my running does not end here. Yeah. I'm going to keep going. I, I don't know. I don't know when the next time I'll do anything competitive will be, but I'm going to keep doing something. I think that it being competitive isn't always what matters. Right. I think it's about the movement and it being good for you. And, yeah. and I think that once you've kind of found your groove, you want to keep that going. And I feel like some people, you know, like you, they have this big goal, they hit the goal and then they stop. And I just wanted to make sure that you weren't going to do that. No, um, they're not to disclose a whole lot, and it hasn't been any kind of weight loss initiative. I've been not drinking a whole lot of sugar and not eating like an idiot all the time. Well done. But there's a two on the left-hand side of the scale for the first time in about 15 years. Woohoo! Mm. So Congratulations. Now I need to follow that up and make it 2-8, and then we'll work on 2-7. And I think that's about as low as I'm going to go. But that's motivation right <laughs> there. Is. I mean, because you see what's happening yeah. from your kind of shift in your diet, your shift in your exercise or movement. And it doesn't huh. always have to be running. Like, I know running can be hard on you, especially yeah. when you're a little bit bigger. Yeah. But I think walking is a great option, and I just I want to make sure that I encourage you to continue that. Well, not, not depending on concession stands and late-night McDonald's for dinner due to my career change enables me to make a couple of different choices. So that's what I'm trying to do. Very nice. All right, I got some questions for Kevin. Oh. So, Kevin... You've been doing, and and Kevin does the Dopey Challenge. And the Dopey Challenge is where you do a 5K, a 10K, a half marathon, and then a marathon. You do that in four consecutive days. Correct. Okay. So I I have always thought this is a little far-fetched, but it keeps showing up on your schedule every year. And I've just kind of like come to expect that that's not going to go away. Mm -hmm. But why? Like when you first started doing it, I, I understand now it's just like what you do, mm-hmm. but like originally, didn't you think this is a stupid idea? Well, <laughs> well, I had done the, go- I had the goofy challenge before that, which what was, was goofy. Goofy is, and, and they still have the goofy challenge. That's where you do the half marathon and the full marathon. Oh, that's all. And you don't do the 5k and 10k portion of it. Okay. So I had done that. I had done that two years and. Then they came up with, they were adding, they've always had the 5K. They've always had the 5K. And then, um, and at the time they called it the family fun 5K or something like that. Okay. That next year, I was turning 40. And that next year they were bringing in the 10K. Okay. And then in addition to that, they said, and we're also, for those of you who want to do all four, you can do the Dopey Challenge. And... You know, we love Disney. We go to Disney. Um, our family has always gone to Disney. I mean, it's my kids have just grown up with it. I, I look forward to the day 
that I'm able to take my grandkids, which I want that to be quite a few years down the road, <laughs> but take them to Disney. And it was just one of those things that I said, you know, there is, there's no way I'm not going to do it. And, and it being a big year for me, year 40, I set a goal of, I was going to do 10 from 40 to 50. I was going to do every single year. I was going to do the dopey challenge. And I surpassed that last year. And then it was, okay, you got 10 and you're perfect. They've, and, and now, and they just suck you in with this stuff, but like your bib, your race bib that you have, it's a different color uh-huh. than ever, all the other dopies. So you felt special. So, and on, on the, and in fact, the picture I took, I'm pointing where it says perfect. <laughs> And you know how I am about medals, and it may just it, this may be a stupid, but I'm like, there's, there's no chance I'm not going to do it. And my oldest daughter asked me, she's like, Dad, when, when do you think? And there's this little perfect dopey Facebook group, and we all want each other to do well, but there's a little tinge of it. It's like, okay, who's going to fall by the wayside this year? What's that number going to get down to? And my oldest daughter asked, like, Dad, how? How long do you think you'll do this? And I said, Kate, I I said, I could literally see myself at 80 years old out there hobbling as fast as I can. Oh, wow. To be able to finish the, but it is, I tell you what it is for me. All that's a bunch of fluff stuff, but it is really one of those things that I have to look at every year. That's something that, okay, Kevin, you can't get too far off the rails. No matter how many times you've done it. Man, when you're standing at the start of that marathon and you're exhausted and tired and sore and everything already, it's a mental challenge. Yeah. As much as it's So fit, that's why you physical. like it. That's where it gets you. It's one of those things that just it forces me. The name of this podcast is Do Hard Things Today. It's one of those things that is it's a very hard thing to do that pushes me out of pushes and this will surprise you probably when I say it, but it pushes me out of my comfort zone to have to continue to do this because now I've kind of laid down the gauntlet of there's an expectation. Yeah. I'm going to do it. And every time when I post and I finish, I'm like, hey, Mickey, because the marathon's the mini and Mickey Mouse marathon. It's like Mickey Mouse put up a valiant effort. But once again, and I, when we would go on mission trips to Nicaragua, they would call me El Grande. Because oh, I, I was like would. the tallest yes. person in the country when we would be there. And so a lot of the, the guys that have gone on those trips, they still call every time, hey, El Grande, what's up? And 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 I'll say, but El Grande triumphs again. And it's just that little bit of, you know what, I'm not going to go win a race or do anything, but I'm every single year. You're winning. I get that bib, and it still says perfect. And – all the crap that can happen, the things that can go wrong, the injuries. There's a little bit of luck involved of just had one guy that dropped out this year, and he um, he was our oldest member of the perfect group. He's, and it poured down rain from him in, in part, part of the marathon. We'll talk about that in a minute. But he just said, he said, man, I got in a mile 20. My legs just gave out. Oh, no. He said they just wouldn't, they just wouldn't go anymore. And so he had to get on the – what we call the parade bus and go back and now his perfect status is gone and a lot of it you see things happen that are just life things that just take you out of it but it's that thing of just continuing to push forward of hey next year next january i'm gonna be doing the dopey challenge yeah i mean honestly like because i've coached you a few of those years I mean, you've had years that were really tough leading up to it where I'm like, okay, Kevin, you have got to get your act together now so that you're in good enough shape to go there and be able to finish and not hurt yourself. And, you know, really, I think at this point for you, it's a mental thing. Like, you know, you can do it. And so I don't know what it would take for you not to be able to finish, but mentally you are always capable. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would say I would say that that is the case. There will come a day oh. when it ends. So keep training. Yeah, and whenever it does, it, it it will not be because I'm not mentally prepared. No, for sure. And and that's that's something I take 
I take pride in, and I even saw that probably saw that this year as much as any. Um, of course, I I broke my toe about six years ago in the half marathon, so I had to do the whole full marathon with a broken big toe. That was pretty tough. But this year, when it poured down rain for miles and miles in that 11 to 19 range, um, it was interesting. You could see people mentally breaking out on the course that the rain had just completely thrown them for a, and I actually felt pretty good of, you know what? It's pouring down rain. So what? Keep moving forward. I like Jocko Wilnick. He's got a little video that he does, and, and he talks about when bad things happen. He said, you know what you say? He said, you say good, and you keep moving. And I kept saying that to myself, and I felt, you know, when you're saying your mantra, that, it became your mantra. Yeah, when you're saying that stuff to yourself, I mean, it, it, it sounds squirrely and corny, but I would pass somebody, and I would just say under my breath, good. And I was yeah. like, man, they're just breaking, and I'm just, and I'm, and I, and I was, and I kind of felt like an old diesel engine out there. Just I was like, man, I'm, I'm just going to, and you know what? Hey, regroup for a half mile in this pouring rain. It's going to be raining. So what are you going to do? You're going to quit? Okay, if quitting's not an option, then keep moving. And and that's what I did. Well done. Well, congratulations. Was, I, I felt really good when when we finished finished that marathon portion. I think you're still on a high. Well, I felt I felt really good. I felt strong. I I, I developed a strategy for the for what I was going to do and stuck to it. Had some, like any marathon, you're going to have some times that you you kind of face yourself in the mirror. Oh, okay. Hey, you you start thinking things. Here's the problem. I think when you start letting thoughts into your mind, that's when the danger zone comes in. And what I mean by that is I had a plan for, I was doing the run walk. I, I was doing, I was running for three minutes and 15 seconds and walking for 45 seconds. Kind of get into that point, you're 10, 11 miles in, and like, hey, I could just start walking now. And you, more than, you you can be fine, not a big deal, you're going to finish, you're going to get your medals, you're going to keep, you start thinking those things. And, and the more you think them, the more they compound, and they build and build and build. That's and why you got to be careful what you're thinking, when you're thinking it. Mm -hmm. You got to really watch those thoughts. Yeah. And and I remembered some of those things, some of those things that you've talked about, some of those things that I've read, and I would just snuff it out. Like, okay, yep. let's Good. take the next mile. Good. What are you going to do this next mile? Then I talk about do hard things today, tomorrow, take care of yourself. It was, okay, let's get the next mile. And then. Then decide what you're going to do for the next mile. Just worry about this mile. Yep. You know. Run run the mile that you're in. Yep. That's that's always good advice to anybody. Yeah. Um. So last question for you. Okay. This is this is a serious one. Mm -hmm. Where are all those medals? Those I am <laughs> actually I am coming up with a way and, and getting two curtain rods, and I'm going to put all of them together in here in the office. Well, that's awesome. And they're going to be on curtain rods. Yeah, oh, that's, that's awesome. you have a big blank wall right behind mm -hmm. Jed. Yep. There's now there are. That's this, a lot. That's going to be heavy. 11. You better get like a metal that's, curtain rod. Yeah. That's 66 metals just from dopey. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yeah. We're not going and, to big lots. We're going to the furniture store for curtain rods. Yeah, we're going I, to furniture I, I think you just need to go get like a piece of rebar. Mm -hmm. Forget about a curtain <laughs> rod, okay? And fits with the work thing here. Fits with the work thing yeah, here it at does. our business. So yeah. just, I, I think curtain rod's a little too frou-frou yep. for that. You know, you need something but, beefier. Okay. But, but I love the metals. They are. They're really cool. I mean, metals are cool. I I always find it challenging. Like, what, what do you do with all these metals? For a long time, I had a great shoebox with just metals, like all these metals thrown in it. Um. A friend of mine, he does ironwork design, and he designed a piece of art that I can, it goes all the way up my staircase, and I can hang my medals on, 
it's it's just the coolest thing. I, I love them, and I'm I have a not going to reveal it, but I have a special plan for the way I'm going to display one special medal that's eight months from now that I'm getting. Oh, that's good. I like I like that forethought. Yep. Very good. And that's all I've got to say about that. All right. <laughs> all right. So um, now we have Bonnie, who's still on here with us. I am. Okay, I'm Bonnie. Here. Tell me yes. about, so was this your first half marathon that you did at Disney? Yes, this was my first Disney race altogether. I was just doing the half. Oh, wow. Okay, but have you been a runner for a while now? Um, I did a 5K several years ago. I was really running a lot that year. Um, and okay. then with changing jobs and stuff, it just kind of fell off. And then I was like, I'm feeling really, I guess it was about this time last year. I was like, I've done 5Ks. Um, I really want to challenge myself. So I'm going to train and do the half marathon at Disney next January. Wow. Because I mean, that's kind of a big jump to go from a 5K it, it a, to a half a marathon. Huge, it was a huge jump. Yes. Uh, did Kevin kind of have anything to do with that? He did. He uh-huh. he helped me throughout the year. Um, and I talked to him about it. Um, and he was like, you know, I, he was like, I think you can do a half. He was like, you've got to train for it. You got to mentally prepare for it. And I did all of that. And then I didn't get to do a half marathon. <laughs> so, so, okay, let's, let's hear about your training first. So okay. how long did you train for it? I really started training, um, probably July. Um, I oh, did wow. some walking, running, uh, March, April, May, um, June, but really started training in July, um, was trying to add in some distance with some, with some longer run times, which I would get kind of discouraged because I couldn't run that fast. But then, you know, Kevin was like, well, it's because it's a hundred degrees outside. Um, and you're running on your days off at one o'clock in the afternoon, you're not going to be able to run as fast. I I hate to say, probably right. Yeah. Kevin, Kevin (laughs) was right on that. That, that does not help your cause. Okay. So, I mean, you really put effort into training for this. Yes, I did. Um, I really put in a lot of effort for it. Okay. So you felt like your training went really well. You felt like you were prepared when you got there. Oh yeah, I was I was definitely prepared. The Sunday before uh, we went down, I had done um, my last big training session, and it was uh, I did fourteen miles. Nice, very nice. Um, in about three hours fifteen minutes. Okay, well done. And, and you you also had there were a couple of those times. You know, tell them about a couple of those times when you you maybe did not have the best run and gave up a little bit and what you learned. Oh, I didn't give up a little bit. I gave up a lot. (laughs) There was that one, and it was really only the one, there was one Sunday I was supposed to do seven miles. Um, and I went out, I didn't really feel good that morning when I woke up, but I was like, I'm not going to let that keep me from going to do it. I need to get this in. And I went, and I, you know, I do the run walk and I got about three miles in and I was just like, I, I feel awful. I, my run time's terrible. I'm not enjoying this. And I got in the car and I went home. I was like, I'm not doing it. I'm, I'm done for today. I was very upset. I was mad. And then I was talking to Kevin about it the next morning. And he was like, on days like that, just walk and finish. No matter how long it takes you, finish it. Get the seven miles in. He was like, or you're not going to be prepared mentally for when the actual race time comes. So the very next Sunday, I went out and I did all seven miles in, I think I did it in like an hour and 45 minutes, um, which was a very good time for me at that point in time. So I was, you know, at that point, I was proud of myself. And I always kept that in in the back of my head on the longer runs, especially when I would start to get tired, if you have to walk it, walk it, but finish. And I don't think I ever completely got to that point again where I just had to stop and walk the rest of the way. I was able to continue to do it. Did you do some run walks in your training or did you try to run everything? I did all run walks. Okay, perfect. All of them were run walk. Yeah, that's, I mean, I think that's really the best way to go when you're trying to increase your distance. But I do agree with Kevin that 
I think mentally sometimes just making yourself do it on a day when you don't feel good, because what happens if you get out there on race day and you don't feel good? Right. Exactly. Um, you, you have to know like how that you can still do it. And, and honestly, most of the times, once you get three to four miles in, you're going to be able to do it. It's yeah. just, it's just that mental battle that we fight with ourselves. And, and I find Men face it too, but I think a lot of times for women, you know, depending on the time of the month or the time that things fall, it can really impact your thinking and how you feel about what you're doing. So um, I'm glad that you were able to get all your training in and go into it feeling really good. Now, when you got there, I heard something not so wonderful happened. Tell us about that. So everything was going great. Um, We'd been watching the weather pretty much for a week and I was prepared to run in the rain I have you know I ran in the rain in some trainings just to get used to running in the rain and so Friday night me and Jay were standing in Animal Kingdom about to get on my favorite ride in the whole world and he got the notification on his phone because he follows WDW News on Twitter And it was posted that the half marathon course was shortened um, to 7.1 miles and was a different course. And Uh. I was absolutely devastated. (laughs) Like, I wasn't mad that they had shortened it. I understood that they're doing this for safety. They they have to. And they can't make that decision at 2 o'clock in the morning. This is something they have to do early. So I understood all of that. But I was devastated. Oh yeah, I was like, and I was. So, I have done uh, all of this work, and I'm not even going to get to run the half, full half marathon. You know, and I didn't say this to them at the time, um, because to who? I didn't even want to say it to Jed and Bonnie. Okay, but in 2017, they canceled the half marathon portion, and looking at the weather, it looked exactly the same as what it was in 2017. Oh, so you knew and, this was not good going in. Well, I'll be honest with you. I was preparing the talk for them to, that they were going to cancel it because it, it was shifting. The weather kept shifting and it kept shifting down yep, where, earlier. yeah, where, you know, it, a couple of days back, the lightning was coming up in the afternoon and then it was 12 o'clock. And then it kept shifting down, and I was like, man, when the National Weather Service puts out their next one, and that's what they do, they wait on those things, I'm like, they're going to cancel this thing. I said, like, and that's that's just going to be bad. Um, especially coming down doing your first marathon, love, she, they love Disney, all those things. So when I saw that, it was a little bit of a relief of, okay, at least she's going to get to run. And then immediately when they went to the 7.1, I'm like, they're cutting out Magic Kingdom. And I was oh. like, God, that's going to be, I'm like, that's not good. <laughs> I'm like, where are we going to run? And then, then I, I'd, been, I'd been talking for months. I can't wait to run down Magic Kingdom. Jed was going to be standing on Main Street. Okay, and, so so how did you shift your mindset? I, and with or without Kevin in your ear, how did you shift your mindset to kind of get yourself, your head on straight before the race when you knew that it was going to be shortened? Like, so what, how, what kind of self-talk did you uh, have at that point? I I spent about an hour um, being upset about it. And then I was like, well, you know what? I'm just going to go out there and I'm going to run the best 7.1 miles I can run. That's all I can do at this point. I'm going to go knock it out. I'm going to run it. And I'm going to be proud of the fact that I know I can run 13.1 miles. I yep, did it this exactly. past week. We had a, I, mean, we actually, I know I can do it. We actually had a friend that helps with that. He works with us here and he runs too. And his, um, his comment to Bonnie, he sent her a text message that said, you ran a half marathon last week in an empty parking lot by yourself with nothing to prove to anybody. Right. So you've done it. Right. Yeah. And at at that point, I started thinking about the fact that at that particular moment a year ago, 
I never thought I would be disappointed about not being able to run 13.1 miles. Well, so I'm just so, going to go out there and run my seven. But but that's a really good shift in thinking. Yeah. But also, and this is something that I always like to remind everybody, you know, when we race, we get very hyper-focused on the race itself. But really, the joy is in the journey and what you accomplished in getting there. And getting there is just the icing on the cake. You're already at Disney. You love Disney. So, you know, even though the race kind of didn't happen the way you had planned or wished, um, it doesn't take away from what you accomplished. Well, and here's something I don't even know if she has realized in this. If she was not trained and was not running at the clip, making the progress in that race for that first roughly five miles when the course got cut even shorter. Yeah, it did. And one good thing is now she has participated in the only Walt Disney World half marathon weekend that included the half marathon having World Showcase in it. That doesn't mean anything to you, Katie. But it may, I mean, to Disney people, it's like if you've done something that none of the others have done, it's a big deal. Okay. What happened was when she – the way the course ran, basically you ran out like you're going to Magic Kingdom, turn around, you come back, come into Epcot. When you get into Epcot, you come in and you make a big loop around World Showcase. Well, Bonnie, the group she started in, when they came in, probably half, I'd say even probably three-quarters of that last corral got diverted because the, the weather was coming in. So, I mean, the weather was so bad – when I got done, they would not allow us, when I finished, and I started in, in the first corral, but when I finished, they made us, if we were resort guests, they made us get, get on the buses. I mean, they weren't they weren't allowing people to go back to the... They weren't playing about the weather. They yeah. weren't making people leave the finish line, but they were strongly encouraging that you leave the finish line. And so when she's coming in, they right, right after she came in to entered back into Epcot, they cut another mile off the course mm. and they missed World Showcase. And so because she was able to be trained and perform like she did, she got to run World Showcase. Which yeah, is so a, another reward. Another yeah. another reward. A small a small reward, but yeah. still small reward. Small, so, yeah. so um so now, you know, you did it. It you didn't get to do the race that was a full half. So, you know, I asked Jed, what's next? What's next for you? Well, I'm actually looking at some half marathons um, Very nice. around the upstate. Greenville um, half marathon at the Greenville. end of March, February, I think. Uh, there's that one. And then um, there's the one in May that goes the uh, Swamp Rabbit Trail that goes from Traveler's Rest to yeah, downtown. Yeah. I believe, yeah, doesn't the, the Greenville half marathon do the same exact thing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Except it doesn't go all the way to downtown. Yep. Um. Yeah, so I'm I'm looking at those and I'm I'm hoping I don't think I'll be able to do it next year. I don't think I'll be able to do Run Disney in 25 because of um, some things we have going on at the end of this year. I'm hoping in 2026 I might try and go run that marathon, but that distance is terrifying to me. But that's that's what makes it fun. Like yeah, that's what I, makes it. I never thought I'd run 13, so maybe we can try 26. But but the, that's a great progression and things being a little bit scary, they force you to train better and be more focused on what you're doing and improving. And, you know, honestly, we should all do more stuff that scares us. So yeah. um, if you need any support, I am happy to um, encourage, support, give you some training tips, whatever you need. Um, but I'm really proud of you and Jed and Kevin, of course, but Kevin, I've kind of come to expect it from him. So um, I, I think this is just really neat, though, that you all embrace these races down at Disney. It was a lot of fun. Not going to lie about it. It was, it was a, a whole lot of fun being down there for it. Well, that's kind of why we're supposed to be doing all this is to have fun. So thanks for sharing your journey with us. Oh, no problem. Thanks, Bob. Thanks. Hey, are, are we done with me? Because I got somebody <laughs> wanting to meet with me yeah, currently. Yeah, go work. Thanks. Uh -huh. Bye. Bye. All right. Walt Disney World Marathon Weekend. 
dibbling and never thought you were done a 5K a year no. ago. No, absolutely not. Bonnie set out on this mission and got cut. You know, circumstances, she controlled what she could control, um, got out there and performed and was able to get that world showcase in. And, and I, there's no doubt she'll be back for hers. And I look forward to seeing you guys' journey. Coach, how are you, how are you taking all this in? Um, it's, it's, um, inspiring. How about mm-hmm. that? No, it is. Absolutely I mean, like, it is. I, I love hearing about like Jed and Bonnie, not to discount your story, but just when people kind of find something that's new and kind of push themselves out of comfort, um, you know, the comfort zone's so easy to stay in. It's so easy just to walk or just not to do it or just go to Disney and have fun at Disney and not do the race. So, um, you know, I think that they have you to thank for that because you probably have put it in their ear once or twice, just my guess. Um, and I just, I love hearing about it. And I hope, I hope that the people listening kind of find inspiration in it too, that these races aren't just for people who've been running forever. You know, you can really pick any distance race, any place, destination, um, but it's not just about the race that you're doing. It's about the journey to get there and just kind of finding yourself through that. That's right. And, you know, it was, I watched Jed when, when I saw him and, and he kept on charging towards the back of Epcot and I just watched him kind of disappear into, it was kind of dark <laughs> back there. And, and when he made that turn, I was like, you know, I said, he, he's going to make it. I said, there's, there's no doubt. And, and I was just, I was very inspired by what what he did and and knowing and 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 bonnie as well just being able to get over that mental barrier of coming out there and be like i'm not gonna get to do what i set out to do but i'm gonna go out and make the very best of it and so yeah take their lead ladies and gentlemen you know what what are the things that you're needing to do what are the what are the scary things out there that you need to take that dip your toe in that water or maybe just jump all the way in because I think what they would tell you is is the way we end the podcast is true. And they did those things in those days that Jed would go walk around the block and not even tell Bonnie about it. In those days that Bonnie would drag her shoes on and get out and get those long miles in, just running around the parking lot, they paid off day after day. And for our family out there trying to do the hard things, just remember, the only thing you have to worry about is do the hard things today and tomorrow will take care of itself.